Just maybe one more minute. Uh, I know that there was a potential uh, vote that Dave wanted to um, propose related to releasing the um, the audits. Uh, just if, if like automatically, if there are no uh, high risk items. Um, so we'll wait maybe thirty more seconds and then. Uh, and then go yeah, forward. it was it was just a procedure change. It's not a really major debatable thing, I don't think. So we could do a vote over email if, if we don't get quorum today. It's no big deal. All right, uh, so I guess let's go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome everyone to the February 21st uh, TSC meeting. Uh, hopefully you've all had a chance to read the antitrust policy notice uh, to ensure that we comply with that. Uh, as always, uh, everyone is welcome in the Hyperledger community. Uh, everyone is free to participate and speak up in this, uh, in this forum. So please feel free to send a message in the chat. Uh, we prefer to use the TSC channel in the Rocket chat if you have any comments, uh, or just uh, unmute yourself and, and speak up in this forum. Uh, looks like we have uh, one announcement to get started related to the internship uh, program, so I'll pass that over uh, to Salona for that call. Hello, yes, um, so we only have one proposal up so far. Um, we were hoping that maybe we'll get some last minute ones in today before tomorrow's deadline, but we're also thinking about extending the deadline. Um, I'd really like to encourage everyone to consider talking to talk to their project about submitting a proposal because this is a really good way to both um, increase your contribution, um, the types of contributions you get, as well as we're going to be working a lot on um, upping the diversity of these interns. And so that becomes another way to also um, work on that as well. Um, Dave, did you want to talk a, a little bit about being a mentor and what all you did and how it went for you? Yeah, I'd be happy to. Um, so last year I mentored um, a USC student, grad student, working on the what now is the Umbra Lab. Um, it was really great. Uh, I just, um, it really is a not very heavy lift, I guess is the point I'm trying to get to here because um, I had an initial meeting um, with all of the candidates. I picked a candidate and then it just came down to having a regular weekly meeting with the intern and um, mostly just email back and forth. Um, a lot of times my role as a mentor uh, was just getting the intern plugged into the right people in the community. So being a mentor for one of these interns is really um, just about knowing who knows what and helping them get involved in the, the chat and and um, mailing lists and, and things like that. So I don't know. I really just saw my role as trying to bring them up as an open source developer. And I'm pretty sure all of you on this call are good at that. So I highly encourage any of you and all of you to uh, volunteer as a mentor. I think it's a, it's a fun experience, actually. So Chris and I are, were having discussions internally with other colleagues and pretty confident we'll have at least one proposal, if not two. I yeah, have, um, oh, I was gonna say, I have two right now in the works, one with um, Annapolis University and one with myself actually, so it's interesting. And if y'all need any help scoping out those projects, um, feel free to contact the um, community architects team at community-architects at, hyperle at hyperledger.org um, and we'll, we can help you in regards to the scoping of that as well as men um, but I know sometimes with men she's not as technical as we are um, but if you need any help in regards to that please contact one of us so that we can help you work on it and get it through yeah um, we do have a great postmortem doc from last year that I think did a good job capturing a lot of the lessons learned so if you you know Dave, can you, add guidance that, there. can you add that link to the announcement? Uh, yes, I'll have to find it later. I, it, it was pre-New Wiki, so it's probably somewhere. Uh, okay, all right, yeah. thanks, appreciate it. Yep. 
on this, um, Silas here, um, I was talking to, to Casey, our CEO, um, and it's a really busy time for us at the moment because we've just launched our actual like paid for product. So we're quite concerned about yet more distractions. However, I did have an idea for a project which was to, to see if we could get someone to run all of the public Ethereum chain through Burrow, something I've wanted to do for a while and I'm pretty sure it's going to break stuff. Um, I, I would definitely be, and I was umming and umming about whether to put in an application before the closing date for a um, for an intern. Um, Casey was not so keen unless we could get some help from uh, like Hyperledger, like maybe a tech ambassador or stuff. I think the issue that we have is unlike some other projects that really like it is it's members of our team. We do have um, Finbert Purek um, who is around, but he's also got a full time job. So. Uh, I caught uh, the, the end of what Dave was saying there about um, it not being such a heavy lift, which uh, pushes me in the other way a little bit. But um, yeah, it, I don't know what the, the capacity for a, a bit of uh, official help from, from someone from Hyperledger maybe is, or just something I could take to Casey and have him say, look, this will only take a, a, a kind of small constant factor on the time I'm already spending doing hey. borrow stuff. Hey Silas, uh, the case I'd make is one, um, you know, we're, we're putting $5,000 into this for each um, uh, mentee, right? So it's not a, not a volunteer position for the mentee, which should, uh, in, uh, in optimistic cases, lead to actual stuff getting created. Um, that's moderated, of course, by the fact that this is somebody's, uh, you know, first time working on a, uh, probably the first time working on a hyperledger related project. So it might not be as cost effective as 5K spent on a, you know, on a maintainer, right? Um, uh, but then secondly, uh, this does seem to be a good way to grow new contributors to a project. Um, and that's something we certainly need on, on Burrow. Um, uh, so that's, I don't know, that'd be the case I'd make to Casey if you were on the phone. Yeah, okay, let, 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 let me run, run that back and um, I'll, um, I'll see if I, I'll, I'll try and, if we, if we do go for it, I'll try and put it in later today. Okay. I know it's I know it's hard hard to find the time to to do this, but it um, uh, if you if you'd craft the because it's also up to you to craft the um, what 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 the mentee would be working on, <clears throat> and so uh, hopefully you'd be able to craft it in such a way that it would be maximal impact for Burrow, you know, low hanging fruit, um, uh, better docs, uh, something that you've been wanting to get around to but just haven't, right? That sort of thing. Does it make sense to just extend it by a week at this point? And we'll be more proactive in getting things done. That's kind of what I wanted to propose to the group. I just wanted to make sure that if we did do it, that we would be getting a lot more things in before doing it because it does slow men down. Um, that would help us a lot on the Hyperledger Indie side. We're in the middle of the Sovereign Agent Connectathon. I know most people are worried about um, the testing process and then their flights home um, for the deadline this Friday. So I think we would get um, better proposals if we have a few more days. Okay, I'll let her know. All right, great. Thanks, everyone. Uh, okay, so moving on to uh, the quarterly reports, uh, we're going to start with the technical working group China. Uh, as a reminder, um, folks, it looks like uh, the majority of the TSC has already read uh, these overviews. So I request that um, uh, whoever is going to present this just provide a very uh, short update or uh, bring up any questions that they may have uh, to the Hyperledger community or to the, the TSC itself. Uh, so do we have anyone on from uh, the Technical Working Group China? Uh, Zheng Hua so the be the represent. Yeah. Uh, let me share my screen. Yeah, and we actually already have it. Uh, we have it up here, uh, Zhenhua. So if, uh, if you want, you can just go ahead and, and speak to it. Okay, uh, oh, oh, our uh, work, uh, group health is very good uh, as usual. And uh, in these quarters, we focus on 
uh, four uh, areas. Uh, the first one is development and innovation. The second one is uh, international and education. I do see some comments on uh, education. Uh, actually, the project is we translate uh, fabric document into Chinese. Uh, so far, we, uh, the progress is very good. I will uh, uh, update uh, later on. And the third one is uh, uh, collaboration and scenarios. Uh, the last one is event organization. And uh, uh, we do have uh, issues because uh, we have a uh, very long uh, public holidays and people uh, get a uh, family together and uh, uh, do the early planning so we have life activities. And uh, uh, we uh, learn from our community and a lot of uh, volunteers are that uh, uh, language and time zone are major uh, barriers for them to contribute uh, uh, code or uh, to attend uh, meeting meetings. And uh, uh, third part is uh, activities. Uh, since our last report was on October 25th, so this report is from right on. And uh, we uh, hold our uh, regular meeting uh, every two weeks. And uh, uh, because of the spring festival, we cancel one session. And by average, we have uh, more than 20 participants. And we do encourage some people to attend our uh, book camp in Hong Kong. Uh, right. Fantastic. Uh, and yeah, I think this is really great. I uh, I don't mean to cut you off, but I think um, most of the folks have re have read this since you uh, did a great job getting this in on time. So I just wanted to maybe rather than read through the rest of the document, um, see if there were any issues that you wanted to raise uh, to the TSC, or if any uh, folks on the call had any questions uh, about the TWGC that they would like to ask. Uh, I, uh, I do have a question. Okay. Um, when you talk about I-18 and um, is that only uh, for for documentation, or are you also talking about uh, messages in the code that 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 uh, you are looking at uh, separation of uh, user-oriented messages um, into separate files uh, so that it can um, enable translation later on. Yeah, for this project, we just, uh, for, uh, so far, we just um, uh, translate the uh, fabric documents. Um, okay, so so that's, that's an interesting thing for, for us here from, from TSC, uh, you know, whether, whether this is something that you know, from whether it's each project or we, we want to have some kind of, uh, you know, uniform development here that would recommend all the projects to enable uh, I-18N at some point uh, proactively by uh, separating now the messages from our code so that it enable, uh, you know, technical groups such as the group in, in China to be able to translate into Chinese easily without having to mess around with the code later on. I, I totally agree with that, Bin. And I think it's a good idea to label both the code and uh, even the for the documentation. Okay, thanks, Bao Hua. Uh, go on, Zhenghua. I sorry, I just uh, said my comment. Okay. Uh, but we, we think uh, uh, some uh, local issues like language. We may we think the uh, we can improve uh, education on uh, prepare some materials for 
beginners to learn like uh, learning material. Uh, I had I had one question uh, as well, and I was wondering if um, there were any project proposals that looked like they were going to be coming um, sort of out of the TWGC. Uh, so I know that uh, I think we had seen the fabric desktop, and I'm and I'm not sure if that was a TWGC item. Uh, but I was just curious if um, there are any updates on maybe new projects that would be coming out of uh, this group. Uh, no, so far, no. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, well David, uh, maybe I can add uh, some more information. There's uh, no tough project uh, till now, but uh, there are definitely some uh, like uh, improvement to existing projects. For example, uh, we have uh, people who proposed uh, into the Ursa project the, to uh, implement the China standard of the cryptography. And also we have uh, uh, developers who propose to improve the Fabric SDK uh, uh, for Node and uh, Python. Okay, that's great. Um, and, and maybe a follow up on that, or there is there any um, is there any any feedback in the TWGC about how uh, you know obviously the internationalization is is one piece. Is there any other feedback on how we can make it easier uh, for contributors in China? Yeah, Jinghua, any comments? Yeah, because. Uh, uh, we have uh we use uh, WeChat a lot and we see a lot of people talk about uh, uh, technical issues but they uh, for them they are not easy to 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 read our English document so we translate it into Chinese and I do think uh, uh, some learning materials is a uh, helpful for them. And uh, uh, in last year, we have uh, evaluated several platforms for the translation, including the Transfex. And uh, finally, uh, the, those uh, contributors they decide to use the GitHub, and also the community, the community with each other with the WeChat group. So that's the current uh, way. Yeah. I have a question. Oh. Um, is there a way to uh, do some kind of a plugin into Rocket Chat that uh, translates from English to Chinese and Chinese to English? Uh, is there such a tool available? Uh, and if so, it would be great because in many other contexts, you can actually uh, translate uh, directly inside. Uh, there are integrated translators in many. Uh, chat applications. Yes, we can translate uh, uh, between different languages in, in WeChat, but uh, uh, in for Rocket, Rocket, Rocket Chat, Chat. Yeah, for I, Rocket I'm Chat. Talk, I don't think yeah, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there might be some uh, uh, some plugins or tools available. Uh, I, I was just, this is a question more for the um, Linux Foundation people and the people who administer the rocket chat. Vipin, I think the uh, better solution would be something similar to what uh, went on with the Telegram stuff, which was write a bot that links WeChat groups with rocket chat groups and vice versa. And then we could um, maybe leverage the translation in WeChat. But anyway, there's a lot of little wrinkles to this, Vipin. We should probably take it offline. Yeah, and I think maybe one other uh, stopgap there would be uh, maybe just trying to create um, like geo-specific channels in Rocket Chat for the projects. So maybe we could have like an Indie China uh, channel or something like that. Um, maybe that would be a useful feature for uh, the various projects to adopt. Yeah, well, all of this sounds like a great project for an intern over the summer. <laughs> Yep. 
All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Shanwa. Are there any other uh, questions on, about the TWGC? Uh, no, so far, thank you. Okay. Thanks very much uh, for filling out this update and appreciate uh, you presenting that. Um, so we'll now move on uh, to an update on Hyperledger Cello. Uh, do we have anyone from Hyperledger Cello on to present uh, the proposal? Um, and as I mentioned before, uh, please, if you could just touch on uh, the couple highlights or any questions that you'd like to raise to the TFD uh, versus reading through uh, the entire update. Looks like uh, Hightow uh, had originally submitted this. All right, is there anyone uh, else from the cello community that would like to uh, speak to the progress uh, with this project? Well, David, um, maybe I can ping Hightow to go along. He's, uh, yeah, he's here. Let me ping him. Okay, great. Uh, I guess while while you do that, it looks like there were some questions uh, down here at the uh, the bottom. Um, it looks like some of them were addressed, uh, which was mainly about um, how Cello will work as Kubernetes support uh, migrates sort of uh, natively into these projects. And it looks like uh, the plan is for uh, Cello to support the native uh, integrations of, of Kubernetes with uh, each of the projects. Yeah, we do have uh, discussed uh, that uh, for inside the, the project, and uh, there are comments that I think uh, Kubernetes might be uh, very popular um, now and uh, even in future, and so we think we can support it. But I, but uh, considered for the roadmap, currently we are still um, at the same time we will still try to support both the the Docker and the VM and uh, yeah, and be, besides the Kubernetes way. All right, fantastic. Uh, are, were there any other questions uh, about the Cello project on the call before we move on? I thought it's online. Okay. Now. Uh, yes, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm late. Oh, no worries, Haita. Uh, just wanted to see if there were, um, we've, you know, roughly discussed the, the, the cello updates and just wanted to see if there were any issues with the, the TSC or any high impact uh, issues you'd like to raise with cello. Okay, okay. So, so. Um, okay, I will report the quarter updates for the cello. Mm, this, this, um, and actually, this, this coaster so far we uh, we mainly <coughs> we mainly uh, mainly to discuss and design the new ar ar architecture for the for the cello. Mm, the consortium governing mod governing mo mo model, uh, <coughs> and in the weekly weekly meeting of cello. Mm, there are many contributors involved in the discussion and design. Yeah. Mm. Mm, and uh, is there, um, is there, there are no new release in this quarter. The, the, the latest release version is uh, 0 0.9, and, and um, which mainly supports the Kubernetes deployment for the Fabric network, but not all re re realized still cannot still uh, still still cannot use SDK core in the user, user dashboard. And in the in the past quarter, we released uh, zero point nine, and um, so um, you know the, the the main feature is the Kubernetes agent, and uh, we improve improve the user experience experience for the user user dashboard. And and the the the, the current current plans is mainly around the consortium governing model, 
and uh, we will re rewrite the code arch architecture and separate the the core core code from the operator dashboard as an um, API service. Mm, so so in the future we can unify the web framework for the operator and user user dashboard. Mm, and then <clears throat> because we will use the CA server mode uh, instead of the crypto configure for the fabric net network. So we will support fabric 1.4 and later version. And uh, we will discard the older fabric version support. Mm. Um, the the, pri the priority, pri priority was the metrics monitor for the fabric network is, is very slow. And, um, Maybe I think it will be supported in the future version, maybe not in the 1.0 version. Yeah. All right, mm, great. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is, this is very useful. Um, did you have any, any uh, questions for the TSE uh, members or anything that was not, not captured here in the written update uh, that you'd like to uh, discuss? Mm currently I have no more question. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh very useful. Appreciate you providing the update and also uh coming in here to uh to answer any questions. Mm, yes. Yeah, um you. thanks again. Uh so with that, uh I will pass it back uh to Salona to discuss uh some of our topics, including the APAC boot camp and the contributor summit. Okay. Hello, Salona here. Um, so the APAC bootcamp is shaping up. Uh, one of the things that I am still looking for is representatives from Sawtooth and Fabric. Um, I believe we've got um, pretty much all the other groups that I would expect to be representing to be doing different sessions. And so I'm working on getting that, the schedule starting to fill out and I'm meeting with everyone to get all of their sessions all filled out. Um, there's going to be a boot camp BC in Vancouver on March 11th. It's actually just Indian focus and the indie team, thanks Nathan and others are going to be reusing some of the materials that they're going to have at the Hong Kong boot camp for that one as well. And we're basically creating a cache of those learning materials to be reused. I'm still working on the timing for the Brazil and India boot camps right now as well. Um, Brazil may be May. India was asking for June, which uh, if everything is productionalized, we can do, but it'll be a little tight. Um, so I'm, I'm still negotiating on those pieces right now. Um, any questions in regards to the boot camps? Okay, um, on the Contributor Summit, uh, I talked with the event staff about the possibility of doing something in Japan and they came back with, you would blow your entire budget. <laughs> um, <clears throat> to which uh, it basically becomes very crucial for us to find a free space if we wanted to do a one day of a, you know, a smaller version of the Contributor Summit in Japan. And so I believe some of the board members are going and asking to find out if that is possible or not. Um, can, can I get confirmation from y'all on this call as to who is asking whom? Uh, I don't see Hart on the call. I know that Hart uh, had said that he could go ask. Uh, so I can follow okay. up directly with Hart uh, on that. Awesome. Um, one of the other things that I was doing is suggesting that um, maybe instead of doing the full bone contributor summit that I wanted to do, that we do scale back to um, asking that a lot of our events have unconferencing days, which can be anything, honestly, um, and will actually uh, mesh in a little bit better with things like the membership summit and the HGF, where basically we add on an additional day that people fill in the sessions that they felt like they didn't get and are willing to run them and do things of that nature. And so that's one of the things that um, I'm discussing with the event staff as to how much that would be and what that would look like. 
Um, I think that might fulfill some of the needs that y'all were looking at. And so I wanted to talk with y'all a bit about it a bit more while I discuss the doability with the event staff. So, so are we still considering um, the con contributor summit to be at the same time and co-located with uh, other uh, hyperledger specific events like member summit or global forum? That's it's hard to do um, for a number of reasons. Again, cost being one of them, uh, unless we find a, a a cheap location. The other is, you know, they're very different audiences. I mean, there'll be a few, quite a few people for whom there is overlap, but quite a few for whom there's not. not. So, um, I, and and it is kind of nice for those for whom there is overlap to to try to space these out over the course of the year. Um, the next hyperledger global forum won't be until the first quarter of 2020, anyways. So, um, I, I, so we wouldn't want to wait till that long to have the contributor summit. Um, I, it's a toss-up over, uh, uh, you, you know, if we if we're to find something affordable to be able to do it in Tokyo just before the member summit, then possibly so. But um, um, there might be more affordable options somewhere. Yeah, I think maybe one thing, given that the, the contributor summit is based on, you know, maintainers and, and high impact contributors, maybe one thing that we could also do is see if we can take a, like a geographic look of, of what the demographics of that group are. Um, that may be another way to, I guess, make it easier for folks. You know, I'm not sure if, you know, the majority of those folks are in the U.S. or Canada or uh, APAC or, or what have you. Um, you know, clearly we want to have that in a variety of locations. I'm just thinking one of the comments that I'd heard on on previous uh, TSC calls is that it's going to be difficult to get out to Japan for the member summit and then maybe to Canada for the contributor summit and then maybe to, you know, I don't know, Europe for the global form. Um, so maybe if we can figure out how to make the, if the member summit is a separate event, how to make that as low impact and uh, as possible, that may be a, a useful thing for us to look at. Um, hey Kelly, I am on the call. Uh, this is oh, hey Hart. Sorry about Sorry. that. Sorry, uh, no worries. Um, and I'll reach out to some people, uh, and I'll keep everybody updated. Okay, thanks. And and if anyone else has uh, connections to uh, corporations or uh, universities in the Tokyo region, and and think that you may be able to get space for a small one day event, um, please reach out to myself or Salona on that. That'd be uh, quite useful. Uh, does anyone else have any uh, thoughts or questions about the the member summit? Okay, and I and then uh, Salona, in the event that we're unable to uh, secure any free space in in Japan, it sounds like uh, that's going to happen sometime in the Q3 timeframe in Canada. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, and the thing that we were looking at doing is something that's a little bit more structured than just an on conference for it. Um, it was going to be, you know, that consensus process that I was talking to you about in regards to the architecture. So it's a little bit more involved. It will have a pretty set agenda in regards to it. I will try to have it so that we have both the consensus creating mechanism as well as some unconferencing time separate. But it, it may end up extending the... Um, time frame from two to three days but i'm not quite sure yet i'm trying to get all of that sussed out um, but if we are okay. doing these other unconferencing days attached to the other events um, where it's not strictly contributors but instead it's a little bit more open so that we can um get that organized uh, Sorry about yeah, that. then maybe just one question on on the contributor summit. Um, it, in terms of the agenda, uh, how, how do you see that playing out? Is that something where we'll, um, you know, have some sort of email thread about what the the attendees are are hoping to discuss? I'm just trying to think about how will we ensure that that's a productive use of of those folks' time. A lot of it'll be on the wiki. Um, it'll be something that's a little bit more structured on the wiki because. Uh, you know, I wanted to do themes for them, and the theme that I wanted to do was interoperability and architecture. And so there would be a lot of different 
things that we would already have scoped out and suggested in regards to that. And it is all about, it is about bringing all the major contributors and maintainers to the same place so that we can have a really good in-depth discussion about those topics. Okay, great, thank you. But yeah, I'll be scoping it out on the wiki at once we know if we're going to be able to do something as structured as I would like to have done. But if we're doing an additional just one day tacked on to the member summit, then it becomes a little different for me in regards to creating those agendas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great. Uh, sounds like the next discussion item is the security audit. Uh, so Dave, uh, do you want to give an yep. update on that? Yeah, sure. So um, I sent an email thread uh, two actually earlier this week, one about the release of the composer security audit that was conducted late last year. Um, there, it looks like I have enough plus ones um, from the TSC and the mailing list to go ahead and do that. But during that uh, discussion, I don't remember exactly who suggested it, but someone suggested from the TSC suggested that um, we do a formal change to the process where the security audits just get released automatically um, if all high and medium critical security bugs are resolved, addressed and resolved, or there aren't any serious issues found um, and that the only time I would need to get TSC approval is if we for whatever reason decide to release the report while there's still outstanding uh, high and medium criticality event, um, issues so um, all I'm asking for right now is just maybe a quick vote if we have quorum on the small process change any questions yeah I think uh that sounds good, but yeah, and I would second that. Are there any are there any concerns with that approach uh, for anyone on the call? No, I think it's good. I'm all for streamlining our process as much as possible. Yeah, and I should point out that this will also this will not eliminate the the blog posts and announcements that go around, you know, in conjunction with the release of these um, reports. So everything else is going to stay the same. It's just I won't bug you guys for a, um, a vote. Well, I think so. Yeah, I think awareness should would be worthwhile. Doesn't need to be yeah. voted on, but I think making sure that there's a heads up, you know, it's going to be published this week or you know whatever, um, is probably in order. Um, sure. And <clears throat> more than just an email, just to make sure everybody's paying full attention. I don't know about everybody else, but I get a lot of spam. So um, you want me to put it on like the TSC agenda and say, hey, yeah, just here's for awareness, the, here's what is coming and here's the review. You can you know take a look at it. I think that'd be useful. Okay. Um, but that do, do, there was there was a sort of a side discussion though on that thread, I think, uh, and that was about you know, uh, you know, is it just one .0s that we're going to be doing a security audit on, and what happens with subsequent major releases where there's huge changes in function or whatever. Do, we don't really have a policy or anything in place that I know of that addresses that. And it seems to me like we should have a conversation. You don't have to have it now, necessarily, but um, I think I think it's worthwhile to sort of have a think about, you know, what it means, you know, for this for this community to be issuing code that's so fundamental. Uh, so fundamentally sort of related to security and trust and yet not have a process for <laughs> subsequent major releases. Yeah. Um, thanks for bringing that up, Chris. Um, that's really a sage observation. Um, the, just to give everybody an update on that, I am fully aware of the lack of procedure and process around this. Um, I've been discussing this with internal staff for the last two quarters, three quarters or so. Um, there's a number of issues related to that. We're, I'm in the process of developing metrics <clears throat> to measure code churn and major changes to um, security sensitive code like APIs and uh, cryptography and things like that. Um, and so the short answer is I 
work every day a little bit on um, developing this policy. So um, I, my plan was to bring this to the TSC um, fairly soon, actually. Um, we're getting to a point where I could have an answer and a proposal for this, but you're right. Um, there is no official policy and I will be seeking the advice of the TSC here very soon. Okay. So. And then the, the other related thing is I had a chat this week um, from an IBM perspective with our colleagues at GitHub and um, I think they're fishing around. I think they're going to do some things from a security um, perspective. They, they currently have um, a, a process of notifying the owners of um, somebody's having breakfast or maybe it's somebody sniffling like me um, uh, th that, you know, they notify the owners of repositories um, when um, uh, one of the modules or components typically node, um, I think initially, but um, is known to have vulnerability and, um, and then they, you know, send an email to the owner of that repository. Um, the owner of the repositories, I think, is going to be like somebody on the LF staff. How do we get if there are some of those um, GitHub notifications to the owner? How does that get back to the teams? Right. Do you want to take this question? One? I uh, I'm I'm that guy. I get all. I of figured as much. Yeah, I didn't want to point you know fingers, but I no, no, no. That's fine. Um, getting them. Yeah. I I went through all of the projects that are. Uh, developed on GitHub uh, and added all of their, all of those projects, like all of the Sawtooth, all those other projects, I added uh, those administrator and contributor teams to the alerts. So when they log in, they'll see the banner at the top of the page. Uh, I don't have any mechanism to do the same thing uh, because there aren't teams you know, the, nobody has commit access on GitHub, right? Right, right. And the way GitHub works, it's a huge, uh, it's very difficult for me to surface that to you other than to forward the email, which I think is pretty low bandwidth. I'm open to uh, any suggestions. Uh, you know, I think the, the difficulty is if you're using Garrett, how often do you log into GitHub to see the banner at the top of the GitHub page, right? Never. Right. Yeah. Um, so it would be setting up a parallel, uh, you know, set of groups of people, making them committers or admins on these projects for the sole purpose of receiving this email. That seems not great. Right. What is there a way that we can just, uh, add the security at hyperledger.org email address um, to one of these accounts so that whenever those alerts happen, they just get sent to the security list. It's the same problem. Um, the, the, no, uh, we, we can discuss offline, but it, the, uh, so what would happen is you would get a truncated email. You get a, you get an email that has all of your alerts and there are many. And then those people would need to log in as the security at person to see the actual uh, alerts. So we have to set up an account, you know, you would not get the full fidelity alerts if you did it that way either. So you get a general notice, there are problems. Yes, we already know there are problems. You would not get anything very actionable. I can shoot around a copy of the email that I get, but it's not, it's not anything that, you know, you're going to be able to work with. Yeah, let's discuss this offline. But I think there is something here that we can, there's definitely some improvement we can make, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, great. With that, do we want to uh, move forward with a vote? I, I will uh, also second Chris's um, uh, thought there that a heads up would be nice. For me, email's fine. Uh, an update in the TSC would be uh, fine as well. Six Confluence emails don't do it for you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh -huh. um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is, I mean, fundamentally, it's part of the problem. It's part of the managing your spam folder. 
problem, right? On consoles. So I think it's great that you can, oh, well, okay, I guess I have to go in there and figure out my settings, but. There is I, something where I you dial them down, I'm still not gonna get the ones that matter, right, so. You can set to just get digest on Confluence. And so I highly suggest that everyone go on their profile page and change it to digest. So that way you can go and see the granularity, but only get bugged once a day. All right, thanks. Um, so uh, I guess do we wanna uh, move forward with the vote on that? I'd like to propose that uh, that we make the security audit release automatic if there are no uh, higher medium severity bugs that are unresolved. I second that, that we should do, do that vote. All right, great. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and do this. Uh, are all in favor, uh, aye. 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 Is aye. anyone opposed to making the uh, security audit automatic? Nay. Any of those? Thanks, everybody. All right. Fantastic. Thanks, Dave. Really appreciate that. Okay. Uh, I will pass it uh, back to Salona uh, to talk about the uh, quilt reboot and the DNI meeting. Thanks. Um, actually, Ryle did the DNI meeting. Um, the quilt reboot is um, still going. We had, I think, a pretty productive conversation with. Silas um, yesterday in regards to it. I still have to get the architecture working group to come in and also talk with them next Wednesday. Right now I'm keeping things very open, though I am noticing a big conversation based off of protocols to support um, value versus asset um, transfer. And uh, there was a little bit of a question in regards to standardization and what Hyperledger can give on top of the ILP. Um, but I'm trying to keep all the discussions right now very open since we had so much input in regards to this arena that I wanted us to first figure out where everyone is and get a good um, idea of the overarching needs of everyone before we sit down and figure out what the limitations are because I told them that we would be bringing this back to the TSC and if there ends up being another project or if there ends up being labs or there ends up being a working group that comes out of it, that what we needed to sort out what all exists first and then come to y'all with our proposal as to what that would look like. Silas, did you have anything to add about the meeting? Um, yeah, I found that quite useful. Um, I think that probably expanding the scope of Quilt sounds like the wrong thing to do. Um, uh, I think Raphael, from what he was saying there, I, I don't think the scope of the Interledger protocol is particularly about um, state transfer. Um, I, as I mentioned on the call, I think that there is a, a, a gap here for a working group that is uh, on something like meta consensus, um, but the idea of uh, safely uh, doing atomic swaps of, of state and or value between different chains uh, that's something I'd be interested in, although I don't know whether I'm interested in volunteering to be a chair of such a group, but uh, if anyone is interested in doing stuff, stuff like that. So this would be basically having smart contract endpoints that allow you to lock up some, some state and or value on one end, check that it's locked up by your validators, and then generate it or release it on the other end. Um, so this would work for potentially transferring stuff from Ethereum to Burrow, from Burrow to Sawtooth or whatever. Um, but it sounds like there's not specific enough stuff for implementation uh, to, to approach such a broad topic. And I think it would, it, it would blur the, the quilt project, which is, is a ILP and implementation. Right. Uh, thank you. Um, is there any other questions in regards to the quilt portion? as to where we are. Was there anyone who wants to participate that hasn't been participating yet? Um, we are going to have our next, I know that there was a conflict with Ursa this week, but we are going to be having another meeting next week. So I'm hoping- Yeah, I, I, wanted, I wanted to participate, but I, I missed the first two altogether. So, um, so hopefully to, to make the next one. 
Okay, thanks, Ben. I'd, be, I'd appreciate it. Okay, um, I think that's it for, for the quilt reboot. Rye, did you want to talk on the DNI meeting? Sure. Um, this will be fairly short. Uh, we had our biweekly uh, community health committee meeting yesterday. Uh, I put some links in Rocket Chat, and uh, we are continuing to uh, work with Chaos. We had a very good presentation uh, from Mandy uh, from Intel. I was hoping to have a link to give you to uh, her presentation on how Intel uh, handles some of the the DNI uh, issues. Uh, we are also working with uh, Maturgia and Chaos on getting our uh, defining our metrics and getting those reflected in, in Chaos development uh, so that all the projects uh, have access to those going forward. Um, the, the group is uh, fairly active. It meets, uh, the, the Chaos DNI group meets every week. And we would love more participation in general for Chaos. And I'll provide a link in the meeting to the uh, to the chaos space. Um, all right, that's a little bit disjointed, but uh, any questions? Um, right, we also decided that the community health group was gonna get a special space on the wiki to share with people, correct? Uh, it sort of does right now, right? It's, we have a community uh, health committee space in the Hyperledger Community Tools home, right? Um, we can move that, but uh, I, I mean, we were already. I, I don't think they were. I don't think they were aware of the fact that we've got a space and that it's starting to get scaled up. Okay, well, I there's a link in the uh, Rocket Chat channel to that space. This is the first link that I posted. Um, it's we first brought this about as a working group, um, and then we didn't you know, meet the bar as a working group. So now we're, uh, you know, a committee. So I'm a little bit gun shy about creating a kind of a top level space for it. Well, let's just go ahead and share that link in the TSC notes so that the people can go in and see what the different progress is so that they can watch it. Thank you. Sure. All right, great. Um, so that covers the, the topics for today. Um, as folks will notice, uh, we are about a quarter behind uh, on updates from the Hyperledger Composer project. Um, so that project is looking for uh, new contributors and new maintainers uh, for that project. Uh, so if anyone on the call is interested in uh, helping to, to continue to move that project forward, uh, please reach out to myself or uh, Solona. Um, and as you see here, Quilt is also uh, going through a reboot uh, as well. Um, so that's another area uh, if folks are looking to get involved that, that they can help out with. Uh, before we end for the day, are there any other uh, opens or uh, topics that folks would like to discuss? I'd just like to encourage people to um, remember to help me put things in regards to the backlog so that we can make sure to keep things updated. You know, Chris brought up the whole um, security policy and what that's going to be. Um, Dave's already working on that for the project readiness update that'll be doing later on. Um, it's not quite ready yet, but it will be eventually. So if there's are other things that, um, especially with me being newish that I'm not aware of, uh, that this is a really good place to put things in so that we can prepare reports for you. All right, any other opens? All right, well, thanks everyone for your participation today. Uh, we'll meet again next week and hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you. Thanks. Thank Bye. you. Thank Bye. you. Thanks, everybody.